Hi, this is Kevin McPhail with Pipeline FX, and today I will be demonstrating GPU cloud rendering with Redshift and a Cube 7 render farm consisting of VM instances provided by our partner Microsoft on their Azure platform. Uh, for today's demonstration, we have set up a complete render farm on Azure, including the Cube Supervisor, Workers, and the Storage. Let's uh, jump to the Supervisor and uh, take a quick look at it. Um, so we have uh, Cube 7 running with uh, Wrangler View as our interface. As you can see for our workers, right at the moment, we just have two workers set up. Um, so let's take a closer look at the workers themselves. So we have two ways to interface with the Azure pools. We can use uh, an application like Batch Explorer, and we can look at the pools that way, or we can do it through the Microsoft Azure web portal. So through the web portal, I'll take a quick look. Um, so the machines that we're using today are the NC12 V2s. These are dual GPU instances. You can have single GPU instances or four GPU. There's several different options for the different size of the number of cores and RAM. Um, what you choose would be totally up to your own need. Uh, let's uh, let's take this pool here. We're going to render 320 frames of Redshift. So let's scale this up from two nodes to 40 nodes. It takes, um, depending on um, how um, busy Azure is, it could take anywhere from five to 10 minutes for the complete uh, scale process to occur. The, the nodes that we're using, they start out just as a base node and then our application packages are installed on top of that. So for ours, we have uh, the NVIDIA drivers being installed, our cube dependencies and install files and our scripts, and then Redshift is also being installed. Um, this can be completely configured to your studio's particular needs. And currently we have two low priority nodes. So we'll increase that to 40 nodes and save. Um, we're going to use low priority nodes. The renders we're doing right now are fairly quick and there's really low chance of the nodes that we're using being preempted. If you have a must deliver project or if your frames are longer, you may choose to go with dedicated nodes. The decision would be based on your own need. So let's go ahead and submit the scale. And that was successful. And we'll come back and look at the overview. So as the nodes uh, start coming online, we'll start seeing them um, start up, move into the waiting for start task, and then we'll start seeing them join the supervisor. So uh, we'll come back in a few minutes once uh, we have the 40 nodes up and they're all starting to come onto the supervisor. Okay, we are back. Um, you can see that we've scaled the pool up to 40 nodes and the majority of the nodes I have um, fully started and have moved into the idle state. So let's go back to the cube supervisor and refresh our interface. And we see here that we now have um, the 31 of the workers available and the last few will populate here shortly. Now we're almost at uh, 35, so we're almost at 40. So let's uh, jump over to the job side and take a look at the uh, job that we're going to submit while that finishes up. Okay, so uh, this is a render that I submitted earlier today with a single frame. Um, I'm going to re-render this uh, as an entire sequence of 320 frames and we will see uh, what we can do with that on the 40 nodes. So let's uh, select this job and resubmit it. And um, let's increase our frame range to 320 and we're going to increase our chunk size to eight so that means that uh, each of our workers will render eight frames at a time before they return to the supervisor and ask for more work to be dispatched to them and I should increase this value here to 40 to tell the supervisor how many workers are to participate in the render so let me also open up our expert mode options so we can look at some of the Redshift-specific options. 
probably the one that's most important um, or most interest is the GPU option. So with Redshift by default it will use all of the GPUs that it detects on the system. Um, but we can also tell it to uh, just use a specific GPU or a set of GPUs. So I can tell just GPU zero uh, on the render node. So I'm going to give this a new name for the test. So we'll call it a Redshift Azure test. And I think we are ready to submit this to the farm. Okay. I'll give that a second to think. There, we have uh, the 40, 40 instance render uh, in running. And we can take a look at our workers and refresh. And there, all 40 machines have uh, picked up and started rendering. Refresh this job as well. So let's take a look and <clears throat> I have one render node that I've already connected into and I'm running the NVIDIA GPU utilization application and it'll show us uh, the GPUs in use. So we have uh, the two GPU node, two Tesla P100s and we should start seeing uh, once the job file loads up and Redshift starts rendering, we'll see, uh, we'll see the frames. Okay, so we can see the both render both GPUs on this render node have started picking up and rendering one frame. And you will note as the render proceeds, you'll see a drop in the GPU usage and then it'll rise back up. And what you're actually seeing is the stop of the first frame and the GPU moving on to the second frame. And because we have a um, chunk size of eight, you'll see that occurrence eight times on this chart as it renders each frame and then the the worker will cease rendering will return back to the supervisor request more work and then um, continue on rendering again if it's been dispatched new work so we'll let this continue there and we'll refresh our job overall Um, we can see that we have frames starting to render already. So we've had quite a few frames finished. They'll be out of sequence so far as all the nodes render their own portions. And I will come back in just a moment when we are getting close to being complete. All right, we're back. And the last frame is just finishing up now. So we'll do another little refresh selected. And there we go, the job is complete. So thank you very much for your time. This is Kevin McPhail of Pipeline Effects.